Hey friends, welcome back to Acre Homestead. It's the next day and we are at my mom's house and we are gonna pull this party together. Hello, good to see you this morning. My mom is getting started on making the frosting. So if you missed yesterday's video, we started prepping for a big Easter and birthday celebration. And today we're gonna pull it all together. So let me walk you around the kitchen and kind of show you what we're gonna do today to get this party started. So first off, my dad is stuffing some eggs with some $1 bills and some fruit snacks so that he can hide the eggs later this morning. My mom is working on two frostings because we are making two different cakes. The, this cake is for the birthday celebration that we're doing today and it's a strawberry cake. And this is what's called a Chinese wedding cake. It's a family favorite. It's a yellow cake with pineapple juice instead of milk. And then it's gonna have a layer of banana pudding and cream cheese and whipped cream on the top. And then for the main course today, we are having a stuffed pork loin. This is a pork loin that I ordered when I got my whole hog. I asked them to save the pork loin whole so that we could make this recipe. I've never done it before, but I'm excited to try it. We are going to make the empty tomb rolls. We're gonna use my one hour buttery dough roll recipe. I'll link that, well, all these recipes will be linked down below. And my mom doesn't have yeast, and so we are gonna send my dad, or I, or my sister are gonna go get yeast so we can do that. We need to finish the mashed potatoes. We need to prep the vegetables to be roasted, make the hollandaise sauce, finish the deviled eggs, which is what I am actually working on right now is peeling those eggs. And while I peel eggs, my mom's gonna work on the, are you doing the strawberry frosting? I'm doing the strawberry frosting, and remember we got these yeah. dehydr dehydrated strawberries. Freeze dried. Freeze dried, sorry. Yeah. I'm going to have to powder them some way. I think I'm gonna whack them with a oh, rolling a pin. It's in probably in the bag. bag, yeah, in, in the bag. bag. I'm just gonna whack, because if I put it in the food processor or the mixer, I'll lose so much of it. That's true. Of the That's powdery. True. So, and this stuff was like seven dollars. <laughs> yeah. In this stand mixer, there is butter, and then she's gonna add salt and some vanilla, and then she's gonna whip that together and get it nice and light and fluffy, and then she is gonna add six cups of powdered sugar. And that is gonna be the base of her strawberry frosting. She likes to add about one cup at a time and then she'll pulse the mixer before she turns it on full blast so that the powdered sugar can incorporate and not spew all over the entire kitchen. Oh yeah, they're pretty big. I'm gonna have to really mash them. Might have to actually cut them, chop them. No, I think, I think, think freeze dried they'll, they'll just powder. Just they'll powder? I think all so. Right. We'll try. All right, here we go. Oh, that air smelled good. <laughs> this foil plastic bag is better than as if, oh yeah, it's pretty powdery. Oh, this works better too now. Thanks. I'm looking at this. I bet you could use freeze dried strawberries powdered instead of jello. And then you'd have a um, less chemical induced <laughs> um, cake. I'm gonna try that next time. There's still some lumps in it, but I think that's okay. I'm going to, um, I'm not going to pipe decorating. I'm going to do little mountains, I think. Little peaks instead, because when there's lumps, it gets stuck in the piping tip. It smells good. The jello that my mom is referencing is from yesterday when we made the cake the actual strawberry cake itself. She used a white cake and added a jello strawberry packet to it to flavor it strawberry. And so next time she's going to experiment and she's gonna try adding just these freeze dried strawberries to her white cake to see if that works just as well. I finally got these eggs peeled and they're gonna go in the fridge. I'm gonna, I wanna switch gears and I wanna get the pork loin stuffed now because that's gonna take a lot of my concentration. So I wanna get that done first thing. And then my mom's gonna get the cake frosted. So I'm gonna put these in the fridge. We have more grandkids arriving in not too long of a time. So we need to get the, the uh, more challenging stuff done before they all arrive. Yes. I was thinking they might have fun stuffing the rolls with the marshmallows. Okay, I'm gonna pre-cut I'm gonna pre -cut some twine because I know we're gonna need it instead of after my hands get gooky. Oh, that's a good idea. I never would have thought of that. <laughs> I'd have rolled it all up and then been standing there holding it, hollering at somebody to help do the tying. 
Okay, so. There we go. I think those are long enough. I have some paper towels here. I'm gonna take just a second to dry the outside of my roast. Okay, I have to reread exactly how to cut this. So it says, have the short end facing me and the fat side down toward the cutting board. Use a sharp knife to slice the roast open about a half an inch from the bottom of the roast, parallel with the cutting board, so this way. So like this. And you want a half inch. Half Good inch. luck. Okay, hopefully this knife is sharp. Be careful not to cut all the way through. Continue cutting, unrolling the roast until you have a large, thin piece of meat. Place the roll out, okay, so this is the first step. No, I'm cutting the fat, not the, the meat. I'm gonna do the nice ones for a chick. Sure. I think this is working. Well, this is my first time doing something like this and it's not the most evenly cut, but we got it opened. Now we do that one more time. And this piece came unattached, but I think we can wrap it up in our, with our wrap. I think this is working, Mom. Good. Okay. I don't think I want to cut it any more than that. I'm just gonna use this piece of saran wrap so we don't have to use another one. Now we're supposed to pound it so it grows in size by 10 to 20%. So this is gonna take a few minutes. I found a teeny little spoon that I might be able to get this egg yolk out because it's not cut in the middle to make a chick. You cut it about a third of the way down. So it was a challenge to try and get it out. While I'm working on making the meat a little bit thinner, my mom is prepping the eggs for the deviled eggs. We are gonna to attempt to make little chicks and that's what she's doing here. She's cutting the top one third off and using this cute little spoon that she found in order to hollow it out. And then the rest of them, we are gonna go ahead and just make into regular deviled eggs. We had a very, very, very difficult time peeling these eggs and so we're gonna only make the really nice eggs turn into chicks and the rest of them will just be regular deviled eggs. So now we have it basically to the edge of the cutting board. So that's about as thin as I think I'm gonna get it. So I'm gonna take our stuffing and it says to leave one inch around each edge. And I'm gonna cook whatever stuffing doesn't fit because I think I made way too much stuffing and we'll just have it cooked in the oven because I put my hands in there. And then people can put it over their mashed potatoes or something like that. Do you think we should make uh, some gravy? Oh, we might. Because we have the With the drippings, yeah. And the white wine. Yeah, let's do that. Because that's the problem with having mashed potatoes. You have to have gravy for yeah. mashed potatoes. Yeah, I could have brought some extra broth over too. Okay, we got that stuffed. Okay. I think these are the best ones. I think working with cold stuffing is probably easier because it's kind of firm. Okay, the rest I'm gonna just cut in half. What do you think? The rest are yeah. pretty gnarly looking. All right, it says starting with the short side, roll jelly roll. So we're gonna start here. So I went ahead and I unrolled it and restuffed it with more stuffing. So this thing is massive. Cause it wasn't falling out on the ends like I thought it was going to. So I stuffed it all the way to the ends. Now we need to tie it up so that it stays. And I don't even know if my, yeah, my strings are long enough. I'm gonna start in the middle of the roast and work my way out. You can see when I twist under, I'm gonna twist under one more time. By doing that, when you tighten it, it'll keep that knot right where you want it and it's not gonna loosen when you go to tie the next one. I'm gonna put a string about every inch and a half or so. And while I do this, my mom is gonna go ahead and she's gonna start frosting the cake. The trick is to put some frosting on the cardboard 
and that prevents the cake in moving from coming off the cardboard. What holds it on the spinner is the weight. When you push it down, it's not going to slide off the spinner. But you do want to use some frosting as cement. Then you want to make sure you have it evenly on the cardboard. And then I'm going to put supports in the cake uh, between all the layers so that uh, I have had them early on in baking split and fall off or lean to the side. And putting um, skewers in prevents that from happening. Looking pretty good. You're gonna have to buy more of this because we keep doing recipes that need it. You probably had it for probably, 10 years. Yeah, I probably had it for a long time. Actually, I use it to tie uh, uh, turkey wings and poultry. That's about all I use it for. Oh, or you know, to to tie a bundle of herbs. Mm, yeah. What's that called? There's a fancy name for that. Um, can't remember. Tying a bundle of herbs. A bundle of herbs. It's French. So you can take it out. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sometimes I do that for pot roast so that the gravy doesn't have the chunks of herbs. There we go. That looks pretty even. Pretty level. Okay. I'm not going to bother with a piping bag this time because I'm not going to pipe any of, of this cake. Are we putting strawberries on it? I do have strawberries, yes. I will decorate it with strawberries. It smells. This smells so good between the strawberries and the stuffing. And the apple. And yeah, there's the apples sausage and, and onion. sage. Yeah. I love apples and sage. We're kind of, ham is very traditional for Easter dinner. So this kind of plays into that in that we're eating pork, but a roast instead. Yeah. This is a long time coming. I think I watched this video on how to do this probably six years ago. I'm going to cut the tails just so they're a little bit smaller. Well, our family tradition too is that for a birthday party, I make the birthday person's uh, menu. And since we're celebrating Leah's birthday and Easter, and she is having Easter with her mom tomor uh, tomorrow, and they are having ham, she really didn't want ham two days in a row. It's not her favorite. I mean, it's okay, but it's just not her favorite. So when I said, Becky wanted to try this new recipe, she was very excited. She thought that would be really yummy. She's quite a foodie, too. That's pretty, Mom. Is that all right? Yeah, it looks great. I put the potatoes on to cook. I'm going to stick this probably back in the fridge, and then we have to sear it before we put it in the oven. And it's only supposed to take about an hour to cook. I'm thinking it's probably going to take a little bit longer because this thing is thick. And we're going to use my mom's digital thermometer again to do the temperature on this. I didn't use the frosting to glue the cardboard onto the spinner, but I did use the frosting to glue the layer to the cardboard. Cardboard, Because I wanted to be able to get this off. Oh, it is heavy. Do you need help? You got it? Yeah. Good job. That looks so good. Beautiful. Oh, and I got it on the center of the plate, even. <laughs> nice. Very nice. So I'll just stand the strawberries up around here. Oh, that's a good idea. Instead of stick them on the cake and have them be juicy, because we aren't going to eat all this, plus the other one. No. Leah wants to take it home. I'm going to get going on the deviled eggs. My eggs were so s sad looking that we were going to make little chicks, and most of them we just cut in half. I have probably four, One, two, three, four five. five that we're going to make into chicks. But first I'll go ahead and get the filling made and we'll go from there. So some mayonnaise, Dijon mustard, onion powder, garlic powder. I'm not the devil egg maker in the family. I just looked up a recipe to make this. Salt and pepper. It seems like most families have like the deviled egg designated person. And it used to be my aunt and she moved away on my side of the family. And on my husband's side of the family, it's my sister-in-law who always makes the deviled eggs. So I'm not the one who normally does. 
I think I've only made them like a couple times in my life. I think a lot of recipes have sweet relish in them too, but we don't have that. My mom almost wasn't gonna have deviled eggs on the menu for Easter because my mom or dad don't like deviled eggs. And I said, we have to make deviled eggs. And these are eggs from my chickens. I brought over three dozen eggs yesterday. So that's why they were hard to peel because they were such fresh eggs. The recipe doesn't call for it, but I think I'm gonna put a splash of pickle juice just to add a little bit of that dill flavor and a little bit of zing from the vinegar. Oh, you need a piping bag? Sure. I could probably use a Ziploc if you have a Ziploc. Uh, Ziploc. Okay. All right, let's give this a little bit of a taste test. That's good. Put some Tabasco, or uh, oh. not Tabasco, Worcestershire sauce. That's oh, that's right. Good. I was at Winco a little while ago buying Worcestershire sauce, and as I reached for it on the shelf, an older gentleman said, no, what are you going to do with that Worcestershire sauce? I said, well, I'm making salad dressing. And he said, this is what you have to do with it. You have to go home and make deviled eggs. It was like right before Easter. And you have to put it in your yolk mixture. It will take your deviled eggs to the next level. We almost forgot. So, <laughs> he was just such a sweet gentleman. And uh, I like start striking up conversations with folks at the grocery store. You learn the best uh, uh, tricks. Is that good? Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really good. That's almost a level of sweetness. That's cute. I sorted through the hallux of berries and tried to pick out the ones that were closest to the same size. Oh, I think this is darling. Becky, look at that. Thank you. Some of them have sides that aren't quite as ripe. So I'm putting them up against the cake. So this devil egg mixture is good, not great. There's a reason that I am not the deviled egg maker in the family, but I think that comes with practice. Don't ask me. I wouldn't eat them anyway. <laughs> and I fill the chicks first because I want to make sure I have enough for the chicks. Now what we're going to do is we are going to decorate our little chicks. We have four of them. And I have some olives here. I'm not gonna need that many olives because we're gonna use these to make the eyes. So I just put the extra in a bowl and people can snack on those. We'll probably only need two olives. And I have a peel and washed carrot. My mom is gonna start working on the frosting for the empty tomb cake. And the carrot is to make the beaks. So I'm gonna cut them really thinly. I think I'm gonna cut these like a uh, pizza slice. So now I have half of a round and I think I'm going to just cut like that and that's going to be our beak right there. So we need four of those. And that's four. One, two, three, four. And then we need to make little eyes with the olives. You can see why I didn't have the patience to do all 18 of these eggs like this. <laughs> we need eight eyeballs. Basically, I'm making a cream cheese banana layer to go, that, that's the first layer on the uh, empty tomb cake. I'm making one and a half batches. One cake will go to one of my other daughter's um, Easter celebration tomorrow. Uh, the small one will be for here. It calls for eight ounces of cream cheese. Okay, so we got our little chick here. And now what we have to do Oh, that, it's coming together actually just look at that oh yeah that is cute well, I guess they just stick to the egg I was wondering how you were gonna add he make them stick and look here, how cute they are then you put the little top on then you put the head the little lid oh, on oh that's so oh, cute, my gosh Becky. Is this a Pinterest nail or fail? Yes, I think it's a nail. Oh yeah, it thickened up perfectly. Now we're gonna prep the vegetables. Do you think we should toast the coconut layer? 
which is the top, toast it, and then color it green. It might not be as pretty, but... It might taste better. I think it might taste better. Yeah, let's toast it. I opt it. for it. Maybe, maybe it's, it's early in the spring and the grass isn't really green yet. <laughs> How's that? Yeah, I think that sounds good. My mom made one and a half recipes of this cake she's working on because we are celebrating Easter on Saturday with my family. And then she's going to go to my sister and her in-laws house on Sunday to actually celebrate Easter. So one of these cakes is going to be for us today. And one is going to be for my sister and her sister-in-law's family tomorrow. So the very end of asparagus is really tough. So if you take an asparagus and you pull it right where it snaps, that's where the toughness goes. So I just line up the few that I snapped and that just kind of gives me a rough estimate of where I should cut. And these will go to the chickens. I always have a big bowl that I bring back when we do these prep days for the chickens. This is the next layer. And then I've, I strained it, mashed it, pushed it through a sieve to get it as dry as possible. Because we don't want it to be too mo moisture, too much moisture in there. So then you put whipped cream on the top? Yep, and then you put the toasted Toasted coconut. Our potatoes are now soft, so I'm going to strain these and I'll put them right back into this pot. So I'm going to go ahead and get these potatoes completely, whew, steam, completely done, and then we're going to stick them in a crock pot and keep them warm until the dinner tonight. What I like to do is just let them steam a little bit in their pot before I start adding anything so that any of that extra water can just evaporate out. We're gonna toast the coconut. It said 350 for seven to 10 minutes. This is sweetened coconut. I'm gonna work on the filling for the mashed potatoes. My mom has this roasted garlic. So instead of using fresh garlic that I'm gonna cook down in the milk, I'm gonna go ahead and just use this because I think this would be absolutely delicious in mashed potatoes. Oh my gosh, this smells so good. I tend to use a lot of garlic and vanilla in everything I cook. I always at least double or triple it. And one of you guys had commented that anytime you use garlic or vanilla, it should be used without abandon. And I thought that that was perfect because that's the way I cook. If it says, two cloves of garlic, I'm gonna put the whole head of garlic. It says one teaspoon of vanilla, I'm probably gonna put a tablespoon. We still need to season our asparagus and broccoli, but I'm gonna do that in just a minute. I wanted to get these done first. Normally I would put whole milk in here, but my mom has half uh, fat-free milk, so I'm gonna use that and some heavy cream. And then we're gonna put Parmesan cheese, because these are gonna be roasted garlic Parmesan cheese mashed potatoes. And they are so good. So Josh is not much of a cook. He doesn't really enjoy cooking. But sometimes he will cook Valentine's Day dinner for me. And the first time we had these garlic Parmesan mashed potatoes was when he cooked them for me for Valentine's Day. And now they're our staple mashed potato. We're just going to mash that together. Give it a taste test. And then stick it. Oh, Mom, could you give me a little bit of butter, please? Sure. And then we're gonna stick this in the crock pot and just keep it on low so that it can stay nice and warm. Okay, I'm gonna turn this dishwasher on. Okay. If it gets too noisy, we can turn it off. I think it should be okay. I let it sit, I mashed it a little bit more. Now we need to give it a taste test, see if it needs any seasoning adjustment. Yum. I think I'm gonna put a little bit more Parmesan cheese a little bit more milk and that's it i don't think it needs any salt yeah the cheese is generally pretty salty yeah parmesan is you know i think i'm gonna put a little bit more milk than you would think because it is going to be sitting in the crock pot just so that it doesn't dry out do you think i should put this on low or keep warm uh if it's hot just do it on low uh keep warm keep warm okay it is hot 
time to assemble the fruit platter. I went ahead and I washed the blueberries and strawberries right in their container because there's holes in it. And then my mom pre-chopped the pineapple yesterday so we didn't have to worry about that. And the last thing I'm gonna put on here are some grapes. I'm going to try my hand at turning this uh, sourdough roll into an empty tomb. I think I'm going to cut an opening like this. Isn't that cute? I'm going to carve another one. I'm going to just go along the bottom a little ways. Try to make a nice arc. This roll is rock hard. I left it in a paper bag overnight. There we go. Now you can see. There's the door. So things are definitely coming together. The only two things we haven't started at all, rolls, the one hour rolls, but we don't have yeast, so we can't do that till we have yeast, and the hollandaise sauce. I'm gonna prep everything for the hollandaise sauce, but we're not gonna make it till right before we eat it. So I'm gonna put one cup of butter in a bowl that's microwave safe so that we can microwave this butter. We're gonna do the hollandaise sauce in the blender. It's the easiest way to make hollandaise sauce so you don't have to use a double boiler. Some Dijon mustard, and we're gonna put six egg yolks. So I'm gonna put the whites in here. Yolks go in there. A little bit of cayenne pepper. I'm just gonna, okay, so there's no Stopper, so that's it. I'm gonna put this in the fridge because it's eggs. This is just gonna be set aside and when we go to make our hollandaise, we're gonna microwave this and we'll put it in here and I'll show you how to make the easiest hollandaise sauce. The second to last layer on this cake is whipped cream and I'm calling this the five layer wedding cake. So if you're looking for this particular recipe, it's gonna be down in the description box and then my mom is about to top the next layer. So we decided not to use food coloring to dye it. We thought that wasn't necessary. Normally, in the past, my mom has dyed the coconut green. This was my mom's favorite, famous recipe, right? Yes, it was, is. I do remember this it's cake. Grandma it was Jones. wonderful. She's since passed away. We loved her. And uh, this is a rem in remembrance of grandma. Easter and Grandma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wherever. But at least then there's like a front side of the cake and a back side of the cake. While my dad and mom decorate the wedding cakes, I am prepping all the ingredients needed to make the one hour buttery rolls that we're gonna turn into empty tombs. And my sister is on her way and she's supposed to be here in about 10 to 15 minutes with the yeast. So I'll be able to make the rolls as soon as she gets here. My dad is making a path with that rock candy we bought the other day. And while he does that and I have all the ingredients for the rolls, I thought it'd be a good time to start cleaning up some of these dishes because we have been kind of cooking all morning. And normally we do 99% of our prep work the day before, but we are, we probably only got about, I don't know, 40% of it done yesterday. And so there are quite a few dishes and I want to try to get it clean before people start arriving for the party. All right, we're gonna get the one hour rolls going. My dad got the cakes done, I got the dishes done. And then we have a little bit of time where we get to relax, take a breather before we start. I'm actually gonna take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> I normally do this in the KitchenAid, but I washed the KitchenAid already and I pre-measured the flour in here, so we're just gonna do it in here. These are one of the easiest and best rolls. Now we are doing a little bit of a different technique with them. We're gonna stuff them with marshmallows and so that the inside of the roll disappears. So this is gonna be fun. I've never done this before. My mom says I've had these rolls this with this technique, but I don't remember it. We're gonna cover this. Just do them in the oven, mom. This is gonna sit for an hour to rise, and then we are going to roll them in the marshmallow, or what are we doing with them? We're rolling the marshmallows in the butter, and then in cinnamon sugar, and then, and then we're wrapping a roll around each marshmallow, okay. and putting seam side down in case they explode. Okay. <laughs> So we'll do that that in about an hour. We normally, or I normally cook these rolls in a nine by 13, but we want these rolls to be very round. So we decided to put them on a cookie sheet. So we just put a little bit of olive oil on a cookie sheet and we are gonna cook the rolls individually so they're not gonna touch. 
this roll recipe makes 12 rolls and next time I make these rolls for the family, not necessarily these rolls with the marshmallows, but just the one hour buttery rolls, I'm definitely gonna double the recipe because it was a big hit. The last thing we do is put an egg wash on them. We're gonna let them sit for about 15 minutes and then we're gonna pop them in the oven. These rolls bake at 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes and you're gonna have yourself some very delicious rolls. I think these are done. All right, friends, it's time to sear our roast and I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the roasting pan. I went ahead and I turned on the stove here. I have not seasoned this roast yet at all. So we're gonna do that first. I have this pan preheating. I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil in the bottom. Yeah. That's the roast we're gonna have for dinner. We're gonna start with some salt, then we're gonna pepper this really well. A lot of people talk about searing meat as a way to lock in the juices. That's not at all what it does. When you sear meat, you're creating that brown layer, that caramelized layer, and that creates flavor. That's umami flavor. That's the Maillard reaction. The way that we're gonna have this stay nice and moist is we're going to, after we cook it in the oven for, it's gonna take I think at least an hour and 15 minutes because this is super thick. Then we're gonna let it rest. And when you let it rest, what happens is the moisture that's in that roast redistributes. If you cut into a roast when it is hot and it just comes out of the oven, all of the moisture is going to escape from the roast. So that is why we sear our meat is for flavor, not in in the juices. To lock in the juices, we let it rest after it comes out of the oven. And then I'm gonna turn this stove off. I'm gonna be pouring white wine into here. And I don't feel like, I, I don't want this to flambe on me. But I'm gonna step back just in case. And then we're gonna put this back in here. I think, okay, I'm gonna put a little bit of chicken broth or vegetable broth in there, because that's what my mom has. That's a very thoughtful plan. Mom, we need your thermometer. So I'm gonna get my mom to put her digital thermometer. She's got one that she can put in there that goes to her phone. And we wanna cook this until the internal temperature reaches 145 degrees. This party is getting started. My mom is making the punch. All this punch is is ginger ale and cranberry juice. It's one of our family favorites. We have some people that have quite a few food allergies and this is a allergen friendly punch. The kids just opened their Easter baskets and now we're about to go out and do the Easter egg hunt. But we're gonna put the vegetables in the oven because the internal temperature right now of the pork is 125 and it needs to go to 145. So that'll probably be a good about timing to put these in the oven so they'll be nice and warm or warm roasted for when it's dinner time. So we're gonna head out and we're gonna do an Easter egg hunt. While we were doing Easter eggs, my mom took out the pork and we are gonna get going on making a gravy. My sister is gonna make the gravy for us, and while she does that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the hollandaise sauce. So in here again, I have the egg yolks and cayenne pepper, and to make the hollandaise sauce, all I'm going to do is slowly add our melted butter to the blender while the blender is on. I don't have to do anything except slowly, slowly, slowly add the butter. Hollandaise sauce is essentially mayonnaise, but instead of using oil, you use butter. It's the same process where you're emulsifying a fat into an egg yolk. And then we're gonna pour this into our little bowl that my mom prepared for the hollandaise sauce. If you guys have never had homemade hollandaise sauce, it is so good. I didn't show it, but I did add just a little bit of lemon juice to the hollandaise sauce. And here is a trick, my sister, uh, the gravy was a little bit lumpy and so she just took an immersion blender and that smoothed out that gravy This was one of the best gravies I've ever had. I think the wine from the drippings was fantastic 
My sister always is the one that carves the meat in our family. And so she carved up this beautiful stuffed roast. And here is our dinner. You guys, this was one of the best dinners I've had in a really long time. I'm having such a fun time experimenting with all these new recipes with you. And I'm just grateful that we get to share a meal together and enjoy just a beautiful, beautiful dinner. If you guys want the recipes, I will link them down in the description box. Josh and my dad are doing the dishes. I want to say thank you for hanging out with us as we put together this huge Easter and birthday party. We had a great time. I always appreciate you guys hanging out with us as we do this. If you enjoyed this video, I greatly appreciate a thumbs up. If you want to see more of what we have going on around here, consider subscribing if you're new. I'll put a couple other videos you can go watch in the meantime between now and my next upload. Thank you guys for being here. I can't wait to see you next time. I hope you guys are having a great day. Bye guys.